Welcome. I'm Zach Semke, Director of Passive House Accelerator, a catalyst for zero carbon building. We're so glad you've joined us for this special Buildings of Excellence event presented by the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority and Passive House Accelerator. Without further ado, I'll pass it to Michael Ingui, partner of Baxter Ingui Architects and founder of Passive House Accelerator, who's at the Engine 16 construction site with a number of very special guests. So with that, Michael, please take it away. Thank you, Zach, and thanks everyone for uh, coming today, both virtually and in person. Um, uh, as Zach mentioned, I'm partner at Baxter We Architects and the architect for Engine 16. Uh, as a Building of Excellence Round 1 award project, we are pleased to host today's event and provide the backdrop for an exciting Building of Excellence competition announcement. For a bit of context, please enjoy this video uh, about the Buildings of Excellence program. We are the builders of excellence, and we are changing how we build today to meet New York's nation-leading climate and clean energy goals of tomorrow. Change is charging toward a future free of emissions across all of New York State. Change is moving into our towns. Change is reshaping our cities. Change is taking up residence in our buildings. Change is providing quality, healthy, and comfortable housing for all New Yorkers. To date, Buildings of Excellence has awarded a total of 42 winning projects across New York State, helping to reach Governor Hochul's goal of 2 million climate-friendly homes by 2030. We will not stop until we build a better future for all New Yorkers. Let's all work together to continue to take the lead in achieving beautiful, carbon-neutral buildings that improve our quality of life. When brilliant minds collide, mountains move to the side, and excellence begins to rise. Together, we will inspire the industry toward a carbon-neutral future. Thank you again, uh, Governor Hochul and NYSERDA. That's an incredible, uh, ambitious, and exciting uh, plan. Um, <clears throat> just a bit more on me. So I'm partner at Baxter We Architects. I'm also founder of the Passive House Accelerator that Zach Semke is the director of. The Passive House Accelerator is a catalyst for zero carbon buildings. Uh, with the help of and support of NYSERDA and organizations like NYSERDA, we've been able to aggregate projects uh, practitioners, manufacturers onto one platform to share how to do buildings like this in one place. We have podcasts weekly as well as weekly events. Baxter Architects was founded by Ben Baxter over 40 years ago and we've always focused on doing um, high quality buildings, um, high performance buildings, <clears throat> but really what's happened over the past decade or so is Passive House. Our clients really enjoy the amenities that come with it. Um, they like the, uh, the fact that it's uh, uh, sealed from bugs and dust. It gets filtered air 24 seven. It quiet, serene, indoor environment, even in New York City. Uh, and you can do this while you're significantly reducing your electrical needs. And uh, it's the path to net zero. So you get to have your cake and eat it too. We've completed over a dozen of Passive House projects in New York City and have over a dozen in process right now. We've been creating a repeatable approach to Passive House that we like to share. So as a round one Buildings of Excellence winner, Engine 16 is a great example of what can happen when you have a project with NYSERDA. Engine 16 is an adaptive reuse project where we are retrofitting what was a firehouse into a multifamily residential building with a community facility in this space. Engine 16 is all electric. It will be gas free. It includes solar on the roof. It will be a certified passive house project where we're reusing many of the historic elements that were in the firehouse. It is a dream team, uh, a client who believes in the process. Um, I'm happy to be able to work with our principal, Amy Fiella, project manager, Joey Camello, Ashley Griffith and the Baxingui team. R. Sutton is the contractor. I've got um, uh, building type, who is our Passive House consultant, Kevin Brennan, who you're gonna hear from pretty soon, who's the Passive House consultant, and Bob DeVilio, who's the mechanical engineer. 
But the details of this building are repeatable, and they're repeatable across thousands of buildings like this across New York. And with the help of NYSERDA and the Buildings of Excellence program and the new construction program, we're going to be able to share it broadly so others can follow. And sharing is a key aspect of hitting our climate goals. And I'm excited to be part of the program. It's been great. Um, I'm, it's now my pleasure to introduce Doreen Harris, President and CEO of NYSERDA. Doreen has held public and private sector leadership roles, advancing clean energy projects and engineering companies for more than 20 years. As at NYSERDA, Doreen has held executive technical and policy, mostly recently, policy positions, most recently as the vice president of large scale renewables. She has overseen the state's nation leading advancement of renewable resources under the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, including the state's development of offshore wind. And Doreen was instrumental in advancing legislation, modernizing the siting of large scale renewable energy projects across New York. So thank you and welcome. Thank you, Michael, and many thanks to Baxtingui and R. Sutton and Company for hosting us here today. I am Doreen Harris. I'm the President and CEO of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, NYSERDA, the state's clean energy and energy innovation agency. The en Engine 16 architectural and contractor team here today exemplify what the Buildings of Excellence competition is all about and we appreciate your continued industry leadership in advancing New York's clean energy goals. I would also like to thank Rosalie Ginevro, Executive Director of the Architectural League of New York, and Richard Yancey, Executive Director of the Building Energy Exchange for their support not only in this competition, but also in advancing our climate and clean energy goals, as well as all of our attendees, both here in person and virtually for joining us. With the help of our partners, the $40 million Buildings of Excellence competition is moving the market in support of the carbon neutral economy we are building as part of New York's Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act and Governor Hochul's strong commitment to achieving 2 million climate friendly homes by 2030. And I am incredibly proud to announce today that we are making $10 million available under round three of this competition. Achieving our goals is possible with continued public-private partnerships like this one that advance energy efficient solutions paired with sustainable building design and construction. In fact, the Buildings of Excellence competition is the only competition of its kind in the United States, merging together architectural design, resilience, and occupant health to deliver carbon neutral multifamily residential buildings that are safe and affordable for future generations. This competition is administered by NYSERDA with the support of an advisory council comprised of a cross section of experts from the design, real estate and sustainability sectors and partners, including the American Institute of Architects for New York State, American Society of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineers, and the Real Estate Board of New York. The competition launched before we ever could have imagined the global circumstance that we are now in, both with respect to the health impacts of a global pandemic and now the Russian invasion of Ukraine that is contributing to higher energy costs globally. It shows that already we had been integrating resilience and health benefits into NYSERDA's portfolios and programs and progressing on reducing reliance from fossil fuels. Recent events have only bolstered our confidence that we are on the right track and the tangible results we've already seen with the round one and round two awardees has me very excited to see what this next round brings, especially given we added support for early stage design to ensure the most cost effective solutions are integrated into projects from the start. This challenge is representative of the state's investments in initiatives that are fostering more sustainable buildings across the state with on-site renewable power sources, energy efficiency, and innovative electric technologies. And as many of you know, buildings, many of which were built here in, the, in New York well before the time of energy code and clean technologies emerged, 
are responsible for close to half of the combustion-related greenhouse gas emissions in New York State and about one-third of the economy-wide greenhouse gas emissions. And as a result, New Yorkers statewide pay about $31 billion annually for electricity and fuel use in buildings, underscoring the importance of incorporating energy efficiency and low carbon measures as early as possible to lower consumer costs. So designing and developing environmentally responsible buildings that are good both for businesses and residents is at the core of this competition, with more than 40 projects having been awarded since it launched in 2019. And as we move forward to achieve Governor Hochul's goal of 2 million climate-friendly homes while ensuring that more than 800,000 serve low to moderate income households, we are laser focused on reducing emissions, not only in this sector, but economy wide with a comprehensive approach that also integrates clean, renewable energy. So our strong commitment to this work is what brings us here today. And I encourage the building community to submit proposals that show how low carbon green buildings can be affordable, provide healthy, energy efficient living spaces, while also serving New Yorkers that have been historically left behind. And I am excited to witness the innovation and the ideas in this round, what it will bring forward with respect to innovation. And I hope to celebrate more groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings for Buildings of Excellence projects like the one we are privileged to stand here in today. So I encourage attendees to visit our website to learn more about this funding opportunity and I really do want to thank you each for being here with me today to celebrate this milestone. And with that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Rosalie Ginevro, an architectural historian and urbanist and executive director of the Architectural League. Rosalie leads the Blue Ribbon for Design Excellence Review and jury as part of the Buildings of Excellence competition, an award which was introduced last year. So welcome, Rosalie, and thank you all. Hello. I am delighted to be here representing the Architectural League, which is a cultural organization that conceives and carries out all kinds of local, regional, and national programs on architecture and the environment, from lectures by leading international figures to mentorships for students. Our mission is to nurture and encourage excellence in the design of the built environment. It's great to be here today at Engine 16, one of the winners of the first round of the Buildings of Excellence competition. Um, the thinking behind this project demonstrates the comprehensive and innovative approach that is the distinguishing characteristic of good design. We're gonna see, I think, more about Engine 16, but it's a building with a um, long and interesting history, and it's gonna be really exciting to see how it has been reimagined through thoughtful and skillful design through the, for the next era of its life, helping meet New York's pressing need for more housing and community space with a low carbon, passive house, amenity rich solution that will provide a beautiful and comfortable setting for urban life. The Architectural League is very proud to be working with NYSERDA to make overall design quality as exemplified by Engine 16 an important criterion for evaluation of the Buildings of Excellence projects. I said that the mission of the Architectural League is to nurture excellence. What do we mean by excellence? We strongly believe that excellence in design requires bringing together responses to all of the demands that a building or design landscape must meet. Aesthetic quality is important, but certainly does not by itself comprise design excellence. Excellence is achieved through the synthesis of smart answers to questions including how does a project respond to its natural and built context? What materials, structural system, and construction technology should be used? How well does the building serve the functions it's designed for? Are its spaces pleasing and comfortable for, an, for its occupants? Excellence also encompasses the attention given to resiliency, to long-term maintenance and general project longevity, to close analysis of embodied energy, and of course, the energy efficiency or energy production capacity of the project. All of these considerations come into play in evaluating a project's quality of design. Responding to all these demands simultaneously and effectively is hard, but that is what we must ask of su successful projects and talented architects, because all of these questions resolved well 
create better projects that steward our collective resources and provide fitting, comfortable, joyful support for human activities. The Architectural League worked with NYSERDA in round two of the Buildings of Excellence competition to convene a design jury to draw particular attention to projects that brought together these characteristics of design quality. Our jury was made up of five accomplished architects with expertise in multifamily housing, planning, and resiliency. The five projects recognized as Blue Ribbon for Design Excellence awardees by the jury did a lot of things well. They responded sensitively to their contexts in terms of scale and building form and took advantage of site assets. They used appropriate construction methods. They created livable, comfortable unit plans with strong attention to the importance of natural light and, um, and created appealing communal spaces, often using roof terraces to provide outdoor space. And they did all this in a low carbon or carbon neutral overall project. Moving market demand and industry capacity and habits and the knowledge and skills of individual actors forward towards a low carbon future is a challenging goal to say the least. By providing financial support and encouragement, spotlighting design quality along with scalability and replicability and collecting extensive data to make comparative analysis of impacts possible. The Buildings of Excellence competition is not only helping make possible specific individual projects, it's creating a giant shared classroom to help a whole sector of our economy do its work better. NYSERDA's Buildings of Excellence program is helping lead the way towards New York's future of resilient, carbon neutral, and low carbon homes. There could be no more important work to ensure a healthy and prosperous collective future for all New Yorkers. The Architectural League is proud to be part of this effort, and we are really looking forward to round three of the competition. I would like to now introduce Richard Yancey, the founding director of the Building Energy Exchange, an independent nonprofit organization that connects the New York real estate and design communities to energy and lighting efficiency solutions through education, exhibitions, technology, demonstrations, and research. Richard has been listed as one of the top 10 New York energy entrepreneurs and top 10 clean tech leaders of New York by Breaking Energy. Prior to leading um, the Building Energy Exchange, he, has, he had over 20 years of experience as a practicing architect. Welcome, Richard. Thanks, Rosalie. Thanks for that introduction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, my name is Richard Yancey. I'm the executive director of the Building Energy Exchange. Uh, and BX is really New York City's center of excellence for building energy efficiency. And we are in the business of accelerating the transition to healthy, comfortable, and energy efficient buildings by acting as a virtual and physical convening space for New York's 100,000 different building decision makers, as well as all of the communities that live, work, and play in our buildings. Um, first, let me just say, as an architect, it's a real treat to be in this construction site. Although, Michael, this is one of the tidiest construction sites I think I've ever seen. Uh, and I want to give a huge shout out to Doreen Harris and the entire team at NYSERDA for making bold programs like this happen. Um, back in um, 2015, I was lucky enough to visit the city of Brussels. Um, which had just adopted this energy standard that Michael was explaining, the Passive House Energy Standard, for building code for all their new buildings. And we wanted to know how the heck they had managed to pull that off. And it turns out that they had run a competition for about seven years rewarding buildings that um, were uh, exemplary in that respect. And so it's a thrill to see the team at NYSERDA put its weight and money behind this public-private partnership um, that I think is really critical. Uh, this competition recognizes visionary developers and architects who design, build, and renovate beautiful but super energy efficient buildings that can act as the example for the rest of the industry to follow. And not only that, they show that it's replicable and it's affordable. So um, we were thrilled um, at the Building Energy Exchange to be uh, the host for the first awards ceremony, where big checks for lots of money got handed out to these uh, to these kind of uh, uh, industry leading teams, and I was very excited uh, that we uh, that the keynote for that was our 
now governor, then lieutenant governor, Kathy Hochul, um, who really kind of put a stamp on the fact that this was an important effort and that these were amazing people doing amazing work. Um, we are also excited to partner with NYSERDA and the Buildings Ex Excellence team in terms of uh, running an educational series and really transferring that knowledge in those tools um, from these kind of forward industry leading teams of developers and architects onto the rest of the industry so that people can really learn how it's done, not be intimidated by it, see it's actually not that complicated when you really start to get into it, and that it's really affordable. Um, so I'd like to also thank the Buildings of Excellence team themselves, Matt Brown and Kristen Graham and Pat Fitzgerald and Sal Garvin. And I also want to really commend Doreen for attracting some amazing people to NYSERDA. They're great partners to work with. And I have to give a shout out to Greg Hale and Janet Josephs and our board member, Emily Dean. <clears throat> um, BX uh, also um, uh, runs a bunch of other educational series. And I really encourage people to get involved and be part of the conversation and learn from what we do. Uh, and uh, I think this competition in particular is one of the help things that will help tr drive in our building decarbonization and show that these very aggressive policies laid out by Governor Hochul and laid out by the city of New York are possible to achieve. And we are thrilled to see this beautiful example of Engine 16 by one of the most talented architects in New York, Mike Lingui and his, and his whole entire team there. Um, that really will increase the knowledge for all building industry professionals um, and I think Michael especially exemplary of the way he shares the knowledge of how to get this done. So um, kudos to Michael, kudos to NYSERDA, kudos to everyone involved. And now I'd like to hand it back to Michael and Kui um, to close this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. thank you very much, Richard, and thank you for those uh, uh, for, the, for the kind comments. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Engine 16 and, and how and how we do it. Um, so uh, what's exciting about a lot of what we're doing with these buildings, it's it's not very technically difficult. Um, there, there's no um, significant electronics. There's no you know uh, uh, highly technical aspect of it. You just have to build better buildings, um, and that's what. I found so exciting about uh, Passive House. So basically, it's a sealed envelope starting from the cellar, working your way up the walls. You can see it behind me with the, with, with the white walls. You can start to see it in the diagram where you're creating a sealed envelope that's vapor open, so vapor can still go in and out. Um, and it's so tight that it's kind of like wearing a, a high performance windbreaker if you're a runner. Um, the jacket's really thin, but it's warm. It's breathable. Um, it's not letting the wind in. So it's amazing how much a building can perform, or how much better a building can perform with just that windbreaker. Then you don't really actually need to insulate it as much as you might think. Um, you've got a situation where you've got old brick that's been used to drying out to the exterior. So you work with Passive House consultants. You work with people to help you move forward. We involve the consultants early. And we basically, again, create the sealed envelope from the cellar all the way up the walls. What's great about that is it also in New York City helps with things like keeping out the bugs, keeping out the dust. Um, people don't use their allergy medication in the house so much. You've got filtered fresh air 24 seven. A lot of clients that we work with didn't even know they could have that. They didn't know it was an option. They don't know to ask the question, but once they do know they can have it, why wouldn't anybody want to live in a healthier house? And once you build this, you're bringing your energy needs down so significantly that you know a lot of our houses don't really need heat, um, maybe 10 nights a year. So just imagine that. I mean, there's no reason to fight about how we're going to get the energy. You know, what if I don't need it? What if I don't need the heat? So just looking at what we're doing with this building, it's, it's a fun project and it's a great contractor and great team that's really helpful with this. It was a firehouse that had a lot of really fantastic um, elements. It had tin ceilings, incredible wood floors, a beautiful fire stair, um, a lot of detail. Um, and we wound up cataloging that carefully as we removed it and we're going to reinstall it all. So it's again having a contractor and a design team that's um, ready to do the, the work up front didn't take that much longer but you're cataloging it so you're remembering the design process what you have. 
we're keeping the existing wood joists. We're not removing them. We're not removing the fabric that we don't need to remove. That's what's so important about retrofits. There's so many of them. A lot of the structure was built really well. You just have to air seal it better. You can work with it. And this is a great example of a project where we're able to do that. Once you do that, you can start to do things like use air source heat pumps. You can use induction um, uh, cooktops. You can use um, um, induction hot water, I'm sorry, heat pump hot water heaters. You can get all electric buildings. You can start to include solar on the roof, get either close to net zero or net zero ready. Um, it, it's really the, the kind of the gateway to kind of getting into better building. Um, and again, what's nice about it, you know, if I were, were to poll the clients that we have that live in these homes, they don't really think about the fact that they're living in a high performance building. You're not messing with the thermostat. The heat never really changes that much. But what they are realizing is they don't hear the street noise. Uh, it feels healthy. It feels quiet. So the building that we're in today, we're in the community facility. It's where the fire, house, the fire trucks used to be. Um, there's going to be residential above. Um, we're adding an addition at the top. We have solar collectors as well that help with that. And that will also work well with the, um, uh, the, the community that's living in the building where they'll have that shared space. So just talk a little bit more about sharing. Um, this contractor, as well as a lot of our other contractors, have been part of a program that we like to um, uh, uh, push pretty heavily with our contractors where they all meet regularly um, at different job sites. And so competing contractors are meeting with competing contractors, each one hosting um, the, the others on their job site. It's required. And um, the first one was a little awkward. Um, uh, second one was fantastic. Now there's 40 or 50 people. We have contractors who are coming to us who want to do a passive house with us just so they could be invited to those. And it's contractors sharing that information. Um, and it's just the benefit of just knowing how to do it know where to do it. And again, that's what's so nice about NYSERDA. They're really helping with this. So anyway, with that, I will uh, pass it on to uh, stand up, stand up. Kevin Brennan. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Brennan from Brennan Brennan Insulation and Air Sealing and proud co-host of the Passive House Live on the Passive House Accelerator. I'm here with Doreen. We're on the second floor here. And so I think we're going to talk about... Uh, what makes this uh, building excellent? So Kevin, yes, uh, it's great to be with you here today. You're obviously very familiar with the techniques that are applicable here in this building, but why don't you walk us through what we're looking at? Uh, maybe start with the step-by-step -step process you sure. undertake and so show us a close-up. The first step that differentiates this project from a standard renovation is we have a full fluid applied air barrier on the wall that seals up the wall from wind, air, and water as well. And then the second step that differentiates the building is how the wall is framed. It's framed off the wall, slightly offset, so the wall can be fully insulated and thermal bridge free. Mm -hmm. And then the next step of the process would be that the, the uh, vapor control layer or the air vapor control layer, the membrane, gets installed. And the real trick is that that membrane goes through the floor down below. So from the first floor all the way up to the top would be a continuous air vapor membrane. And then we can hit our air tightness uh, goals of one air change per hour. So almost three times tighter than the, the current code minimum. So, wow. All right. Well, let's just continue our tour. And then I have a few detailed questions. But tell us about the windows. I think, obviously, in a building like this, the windows are part of its character, right? So how do you maintain that while improving the efficiency? So this is... Uh it's not quite a historic building, but the owners are keeping the historic nature of the building. Mm -hmm. So from the street line, it'll look the same as it did 100 years ago. Uh, the only difference is, is that this, the window will be a triple pane window, and it'll look and operate as if it did as a, a simulated double hung window. And then what makes the window install slightly different is that it's sitting on insulation. So it breaks that thermal bridge of the window, and it gets the full performance of the R seven window or so, and then where it's placed and how it's installed with the air tightness tapes that then get filled, and then it'll be sealed and put in place. So the windows are what helps to optimize the performance of the window, so there's no cold surfaces. Got it. So is there any difference in the lighting? I'm thinking from a usability perspective, is this will have the same size windows it always did? 
uh, actually on the floor above, they'll be bigger. Wow, that's um, great. Uh, there, there, there were these nice arches in the original design that were taken away in the 70s, and they're going to get more light on the top side. Awesome. But um, uh, full, almost floor-to-ceiling windows, I would say, and you know, natural light will come in very easily on this, uh, this, hmm. this facade. All right, so now let's dig into the details. You mentioned the coating you apply. Tell us about like the materials. Like, what are these made of, and, sp and also with respect to the insulation? Yep. Tell us, talk us about the materials themselves. So this is a fairly new uh, product. It's it's a it's a fluid applied air barrier. So it's, it's an acrylic based uh, sealant. It's meant to be put on the insides of buildings to seal up and make it airtight. So it's a fluid applied. It's a lot easier to coat the inside of a of a building. Okay. That's you can't do a renovation on the outside than it is to do from the outside in. And then the next layer uh, of like air control layer is the the uh, membrane, the air tightness membrane. That's a unique membrane in that it's vapor intelligent, that if too much moisture gets inside of it, it has the ability to dry out. Oh. So it has, a, it's called a vapor intelligent membrane in that it, it'll allow the moisture to come out, but most of the time it's vapor closed. Oh. And then the insulation we're using is uh, cellulose. It's a recycled product. It's a, you know, it's, it's a recycled newspaper treated with a fire retardant and a rodent repellent. And uh, we've been using that, you know, I started my career blowing insulation mm -hmm. for a weatherization program and that's still what we use today. And then I guess the other question would be with respect to an occupant. If I'm living in this building, what differences would I see in my day-to-day -day life? The experience of, live, of being inside of a passive house is that it's really quiet. So on an urban Manhattan street like this, where there's a firehouse around the corner um, uh, with the airtight windows and the air sealed, hermetically sealed kind of enclosure and all the insulation, it's surprisingly quiet and uh, comfortable as well. The temperature range is, uh, is, is very quiet and uh, comfortable. So, it's, it's, so the goal of Passive House is that there's no cold surfaces, so you don't have to really throw heat at it. Um, uh, and it's quiet and uh, soundproof, I guess you could say. Got it. So the temperature in a Passive House, is, it varies less than it would in, a, in, a, in homes that are not passive, built yep. to those standards. Mm -hmm. And then it's just supplied with a, with a uh, fresh air from an ERV, an energy uh, entropy recovery ventilator system mm -hmm. that makes it nice, clean, and fresh, uh, filtered air. And then it's just supplied with a very small uh, a split heat pump. So it's just trickling heat into the, into the building, which also does cooling during the summer months and dehumidification. Huh. So uh, this would be a very nice apartment. Yeah, a, it looks proud. Com beautiful, comfortable has all the qualities that people would be looking for in, in a home. And, and of course, efficient with respect to costs, right? In the long run, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I guess as I wrap up, just one last question. What about time? Does this take a lot longer to construct or to renovate in, than, than a, you know, a non-passive home? Uh, the beauty of working on a project like this is a lot of the decisions have already been made up front. Mm -hmm. So the Passive House consultant, the architect, have figured out the details when they're just the racer marks whereas we're not figuring them, them out on site. And we're replicating and implementing them here, but there's been thought of and planned. If I showed you the, the thermal bridge models or the windows that the, the consultant did, they are magnificent pieces of artwork that say, all right, add some insulation here. All right, one inch or two inch, and it gives numbers to, to, to support the decisions that you're making. I follow so. you. So it's all, from a time perspective, it's really not much there's, longer. There's a little bit a, a time, uh, extra time of uh, sealing and finding leaks, but it's coordinated with a very Got talented it. GC team of our Sutton. Well, this is quite a tour. Um, I'm excited to see all of this behind, behind the walls, right? This isn't a common opportunity. Kevin, it's great to speak with you um, and to see all this work you're doing here in New York and, and beyond. It's, it's great and, and highly replicable. So Thank you very appreciate much. appreciate your tour. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, uh, you Doreen. And also, I'd like to thank our other speakers, uh, Rosalie and, and Richard, as well. Um, and uh, thanks, NYSERDA, for a really exciting announcement. Um, this, is, uh, this is good stuff. It's going to make a big difference. New York is definitely paving the way. Appreciate everybody coming. Have a good day. <laughs>